Chapter 4, Section 5 is still on triangle congruence, but this time we're going to talk about something called side, 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 and side, angle, side. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to use those two things I just said to solve problems, and then also prove that triangles are congruent using those two things. So, remember we had to prove that all six parts of a triangle were congruent, the three angles and the three sides. Totally not practical. So we have something called the property of triangle rigidity, which gives you a shortcut providing two triangles are congruent. It states that if the side lengths of a triangle are given, the triangle can only have one shape. For example, you only need to know that two triangles have three pairs of congruent corresponding sides. And this can be expressed in this postulate. The side, side, side congruence postulate says that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another one, then the triangles have to be congruent. We don't have to prove anything about the angles. If the sides are the same, there's only one way that these can go together, and your angles are going to end up being congruent whether we say they are or not. So there's your shortcut. So let's do an example. Use side, side, side to explain why these two triangles that they give us are congruent. So we want this PQR to be proved congruent to PSR. So we can see that it was given that PS is congruent to PQ. And then we can also see that SR is congruent to QR. So if we're using side, 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 we have to prove that three sides are congruent. So we got two of them down. And then if we look, these two triangles share this side here. So we know that PR is congruent to PR because of the reflexive property of congruence. So now we have three sides on each that are the same. So we can say by side, 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 the triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR. And we got one more to learn today, the side angle side, SAS. This postulate says that if two sides in the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides in the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles have to be congruent. And down here, an included angle is the angle formed by two adjacent sides. So in this case, B is the included angle between AB and BC. It's what's included in there. So I always think of this as like a pair of scissors. If you open a pair of scissors as far as it can go, you're going to get some angle formed here. And then your two things of scissors are going to come out, which means that this line here, like BC, is kind of predetermined. It has to be a specific length. So because this angle is fixed, that means that these two triangles can be congruent as well. So let's do an example with that one. So this diagram shows part of the support structure of a tower. Use side angle side to explain why triangle XYZ, so this one here, is congruent to VWZ, this one here. So, so far they give us two pieces. They give us that from X to Z is congruent to V to Z. And they give us that Y to Z is congruent to W to Z. So, so far we have two sides. Now remember we were told we had to use side angle side, so that means we need to find the included angle between those two. So what we're going to do is look between our two sides, so this side and this side, and the included angle has to be this one. Again, this side and this side, included angle here. So how can I say that those two angles are the same? Well, they're vertical angles. So I can say angle X, Z, Y has to be congruent to angle W, Z, V because of vertical angles. And now we have by the side angle side that these two triangles have to be 
Congrats. So still doing proofs, but way easier than before because we don't have to prove that all six things are congruent anymore. So show that the triangles are congruent for the given value of the variable. So MNO has actual side lengths, 7, 5, and 6. But QRP has just variables in it. So if we plug this in, we get 5 here. 5 plus 2 gives me 7. And then I get 15 minus 9, which is 6. So this QRP really has side lengths of 5, 7, and 6. So because of that, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. But remember, order matters. So if we start up here and go 5, 6, 7, then we have to start up here and go 5, 6, 7 when we say that they are congruent. So that's why it's MNO and PQR. So let's prove one. Tells us that B and C is parallel to A and D, and that um, BC and AD are congruent. So we have our statements, and our reasons, and we need to prove that ABD, so this triangle here, is congruent to CBD, this triangle over here. So let's write down what we're given. BC is parallel to AD. Now the only reason they would tell us that two things are parallel is because they expect us to use our alternate interior angles. So pretend these lines go on forever and ever, here and here. And this is our transversal right here. Because it cuts through those parallel lines, we know that this angle here and this angle here have to be congruent. So I can say that angle CBD is congruent to angle ADB because of alternate interior angles. Sorry, this one was given. And then I can also say that this angle over here is congruent to this angle here because of that. So we have another one, CDB is congruent to ABD. So now that we have that, to make this a little prettier, the other piece of information that they give us is that BC is the same length as AD. So they already marked it for us right here. So right now we have a side and an angle and then another angle out in space. Our two theorems say that all the sides need to be congruent or we need to have side, angle, and then another side. So we need something else. We're looking for one more thing. Whenever you have triangles that occupy the same line, you'll have to talk about those lines. So this one right here, we know that BD is congruent to BD because of the reflexive property of congruence. I keep forgetting to write given here. So now because of that, if you take a look at what we have going on in both triangles, we have a side, an angle, and a side. And then the same thing for the other one. We have a side that's congruent, an angle, and a side. So we can say that these triangles ABD and CDB are congruent because of the side angle side theorem. It's a lot easier than proving that everybody's equal. So that's it you should be able to apply the side, 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 and side, angle, side theorems to solve problems, and that you should be able to prove triangles are congruent by using side, 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 and side, angle, side. Make sure you write down any questions, or if you were confused on a part, put a little star or a question mark next to it, and we can go over it in class tomorrow. Have a good night.